What is up, guys? I'm back talking blue host Luke. Obviously, Matthew, he's currently at the at a broadcasting combine. He's met a few new players like Matthew Pert, talking with NFL insiders, learning some insight to add to our channel. You know, he has an excellent interview with Matthew Pert on the channel. He's made some excellent hype videos while I've been away, made some videos about Xavier McKinney, and we have a ton of more content coming out in the next month today. You know, we're far, it seems far, but the season's right around the corner. August 11th, first preseason game, and then we're, we're on the road right in Detroit. So, you know, the season, the season is upon us, and it is, it is time to get ready. You know, obviously, big concerns right now is we're a week away from the deadline with Saquon Barkley. It's, it's a huge concern. Are we going to sign him or not? You know, they, they're going to sign him. It's just a matter of time. But today, we're going to be focusing on potential breakouts. You know, these are, I, I picked three guys, I think, you know, they're they're all three young players, but I think they have serious potential to be have some breakout seasons this year. You know, I'll just hop right into it. Aziz Ojolari, he's he's the first breakout candidate I have for me. You know, some interesting stats. His first year, twenty twenty one, as a rookie for the Giants, seven he played in seventeen games, eight sacks and one forced fumble. That's not bad for a rookie. Averaging almost half a sack a game, that's that's pretty damn good. And that was he had a great rookie season. The biggest inju- the biggest issue with him is the injuries. It's been his whole career, the injuries. He's only played for two years, but he hasn't played much after after his first season. You know, you have to stay healthy, and he just hasn't been able to. Last year, a bit of a disappointment. When he was on the field, he was great. In seven games, five and a half sacks and three forced fumbles. His pace, he, he could have had a 10-plus sack season if he just stayed on the field and probably been one of the best edge rushers in the league. You know, um, it was disappointing to say that, but I think him and Kayvon Thibodeau, if they both stay healthy, we will have the best edge in the NFL, and it won't be a question. I think we have the best defensive line. The big question is, can Kayvon and Aziz Ojolari stay healthy? You know, Kayvon still has a lot to prove. Ojolari's proved he could play. He, you know, he's been an electric player for the New York football giants. The issue with him is obviously staying on the field. We'll look, we'll look more into that as the season comes on later, but... You know, I, I think he is a potential to have a 10-sack season this year. If he stays on the field, he plays 17 games, he will have at least 10 sacks. That's a promise. He, he is one of the best players on this Giants roster that just needs to stay healthy. Next, Daniel Bellinger. All the swirl around Darren Waller. Darren Waller is a great football player, injury-prone, but he's a great football player. Darren Waller, he's going to be outside. He's not going to be playing a true tight end. Your true tight end this year, it's going to be Daniel Bellinger. Daniel ben- Bellinger will be right next to the tackle. We'll see a lot of sets, a two tight end sets while Darren Waller's out. They're going to be playing a lot of two tight end sets because they have two good tight ends. You know, we don't know how long Darren Waller will be with this team. We do know Daniel Bellinger is probably the future of our tight end core. I think it's great. You know, Daniel Bellinger, a bigger tight end, learning from more of a, a thinner, more elusive tight end like Darren Waller. You know, Daniel Bellinger bulked up. He looks he looks amazing. You know, Travis Kelsey, all those guys talking about how he has great potential. And, and I agree with him. You know, let's just read some of these stats. In 12 games, 268 yards, two touchdowns, and a rushing touchdown against Green Bay and London. Those are not bad stats. He only played in 12 games. Obviously, he had that horrible eye injury in Jacksonville. But he's a tight end. You know, for him, I'd say a really good season for him next year. 500 yards. If he could have a 500 yard season, Darren Waller puts on at least 800. That is one of the best tight end duos in the league, and it won't even be close. If if both these guys produce, it's going to be great. And I think Daniel Bellinger, who's also a great blocker, I think he really is going to be the red zone tight end. There is there was no one better than us in the red zone. It just seemed like it was Daniel Bellinger. That's who we were looking to get the ball to, and he was clutch. You know, he made big plays. You know, he had the playoff touchdown in the postseason game against. Minnesota Vikings that was a huge touchdown for the New York Giants and he always seems to find find an open slot he's a great young tight end I'm really excited to see what he could put up his second season and lastly I, I think we could guess this Isaiah Hodgins you know this guy had had one of the best seasons I think a lot of people have ever seen for a guy that a nobody and no one's ever heard of him you know I was at the game in Houston and you see he starts getting a few catches and you you look up after who's this man? He has forty-one yards in in his one season of NFL football. Only forty-one yards. That's all he's ever put up. Comes to the New York Football Giants, puts up over three hundred fifty yards in just eight games. Eight games with four touchdowns. That's that's incredible numbers from a nobody guy. And let's not forget about that playoff production. Can guy? The big question is, can guys produce in the playoffs? That's why you have them. That's why 
what you need them for. Well, what he did in the playoffs, he had 100 yards and nine catches, 100 yards in the two games and a touchdown. Another big touchdown in Minnesota. He ran a skinny post. He had that, that a few great catches. You know, he, he is a very solid receiver. And I'm, I'm saying if he stays on the field, he plays a full season, I could see him having 750 yards this year. And, and that'd just be excellent. You know, you're you're paying him under a million dollars. If you have a guy you're paying under a million dollars and puts up over 750 yards, that is incredible. And, you know, we'll have to see. Um, you know, obviously, if, if he does that, he'll hit the market next year. But, you know, the Giants receiver core, it's one of the most underrated in the league. You know, they don't have a true number one. You know, maybe it's Darius Slayton, but a lot of questions around a lot of these guys. Obviously, Hodgins, a full-year season. You know, you have a lot of receivers on the Giants that you just question. But if, if, if they... They don't have to answer the questions. All they have to do is produce. If they just put up, if they each just put up 500 yards, just 500 yards for each of them, they'll have the best receiver core in the league. It just, it won't even be close. There, there'll be too many different guys for the defense to adjust to. Isaiah Hodgins, I think he has to be one of the biggest. I think he has to be to fit in that number one. I don't know if Slayton's going to do that, but he has to be one or two this year. He has to be an electrifying receiver. And uh, those are my breakouts candidates for next year. Obviously, Matthew and I will be filming a podcast soon. We'll film together. We'll talk about some of the breakouts. But thank you. Uh, Go Big Blue. See you next episode.